Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama died March 1st at age 68. As a salute to Toriyama, we present this special flashback episode in which Kumar Mulele and I discuss the original 16-volume Dragon Ball series, published in Japanese from 1985 to 1989. It's episode 241, originally published August 16th, 2010. This is Tim. And Mulele. And Kumar. And this is Deconstructing Comics. Welcome to Deconstructing Comics. This is Tim in Tokyo uh, with Mulele also in Tokyo, Kumar in Melbourne. I have brand new headphones this this time, so uh, hopefully you'll notice a difference in the sound quality. Um, today we're talking about Dragon Ball, um, which of course is a very famous, influential manga, particularly in Japan, but it's well known in the States too. And there was a Hollywood live action movie sort of based on it and and so forth. Um, I haven't seen it. I heard it panned vigorously, but well, I saw the I saw the trailer, and that was enough for me. <laughs> um, I have uh, a student who is working with uh, Shueisha on the uh, digital version of of Dragon Ball. Uh, I guess they're they're adapting it to other mediums like um, iPhone apps and whatnot. Hmm. He uh, says that. The the company uh, Shueisha is so pissed at the film version of Dragon Ball that they decided to re-release the comic and lots of um, other sideline projects with Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball, because they want future generations to remember the comic, not the shitty movie. <laughs> well, I think that movie is going to. Um, I, I don't think it, I don't think people remember it now. Three months later, I think it I came and went so quickly. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Like those... When when that's your when that's your your baby, that's that when that's the um, the the comic that uh, makes the company run. Um, you you want to make sure that uh, uh, it's not soiled by any shitty movie. Well, it's mm. it's kind of surprising that Shueisha. Well, maybe they're just not Hollywood savvy, but they didn't monitor it, or they was it was it taken out of their hands? Any kind of control, or uh, I'm sure they had. Yeah, I mean, you would think that if, if it was like the early Marvel movies, that Marvel must have had some kind of say over what happened to their characters. No, did you see the Punisher Man and Fantastic <laughs> well, that's Four? true. I heard about that. They had no say. They. <laughs> that's not the way licensing works. You just license it. You know, people pay for the rights, and unless you've got some sort of clause in there that says we have X but amount of control, this right? is this is Punisher one, two, or three. Or, or, or well, all, all three of them. Marvel didn't have control of any of those movies, and they all stank. And um, if you look at the, the Fantastic Four, the Captain America movies, those things that were made for like twenty bucks in some dude's basement. I mean, <laughs> Marvel did. Sort yeah. Of. Okay. That's. I don't yeah, know. That's a very like good this. point. Um. Anyway, so the comic. Um. Now, um. I had never read Dragon Ball before. You know, I had seen some of the TV cartoon, which is usually fighting followed by more fighting and then some more fighting after that um so it's kind of a surprise to pick up the first two volumes and see how much it is like like its predecessor dr slump just kind mm. of mo much more of a comedy type of thing um with now as, as i actually read the first 16 volumes um and you could definitely see it uh, it's changing as i went through those mm. Whereas, like about by about seven or eight, it's really starting to to change. Um, but early on, it's mm, you could say much more for kids, except um, from an American standpoint, maybe not because there's a lot of like sort of jokey sexual things and toilet humor uh, and it's for Japanese kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Actually, there were there was the the, the uh, bath scene where the uh, girl Luma gives Son Goku a bath was very odd for me. Even living in Japan for twenty years, um, women don't usually give strange kids baths. <laughs> uh, it just it just doesn't doesn't happen. Um, there's there's I think there's a whole lot of. Uh, um, 
uh, like pedof- pedophilic issues there that uh, <laughs> people try to avoid here as well. Mm. Well, um, well, the, I mean, the, the issue with that, I, with that scene, which we're jumping ahead of ourselves here, is that, of course, that uh, in the original floppy issues and in some editions, uh, some of the visit editions, you see his penis. And in the later editions, maybe in the current ones, he's covered over with the towel. And there's there's all sorts of um, – lots of the, the sexual stuff is, is censored outright. But mm-hmm. – um, Anyway, I think we're going to have to come back around to that because it's kind of a big, big part of reading the English version is how much is actually not there. So now you guys were both reading this in Japanese, right? Oh, well, actually, no. Yeah, English. Are you okay, Mulele in English. Kumar, what? Well, I read, I read the original. I read a few volumes in Japanese years ago, and I don't know where those volumes are. I think they they might have ended up going to book off when I left Japan. I'm not sure. Mm, the used um, bookstore, sh- yeah. And um, I've got a one of the I've got one Viz English edition here, which was supposed to be one of the least censored ones, but is actually the most censored. <laughs> and uh, we've also got CBRs. That's another story I'll tell you about later on. And uh, we we're also reading the CBRs of the scans of the original issues, which were the least censored version. Mm. Yeah. So I've actually read the most censored and the least censored version for this. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I I was reading uh, Viz editions. These uh, see this this volume one is uh, seventh printing from August two thousand six, um, mm-hmm. and it was interesting. I picked up the first volume in Japanese uh, and was comparing that to the the first English volume, and I noticed that the Japanese one I picked up was the one hundred forty second printing. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the first printing being in 1985, and this was a September 09 printing. So it, it flies off the shelves here. <laughs> okay, well, um, the story in these first two volumes, we can talk a little bit about that, because sometimes we kind of forget to talk about the story <laughs> um, when we review stuff, but... Um, I was another thing that surprised me was that it's very much based on the Chinese legend of the Monkey King. I that had that was something that I hadn't really understood before. Mm-hmm. Even though it's I mean, very, go ahead. It's very loose. Yeah, very very loose. But, except, except for the base fact that he's got a tail. Uh huh. There's very little <laughs> other well, connection to the. Monkey well, King. he's got the staff as well. Oh, the staff as well. Yes. And there's a character who's a pig. And yes. looking at the Wikipedia entry about uh, the journey to the West, uh, I noticed that th- it refers to a flaming mountain, which also shows up uh, uh, late in the first volume. Right. So there are a few sort of cameo <laughs> of bits and pieces of, of uh, journey to the West, but not all that much. Um, and... They're they're looking for the Dragon Balls, which if you get all seven of them together, you it will call up the uh, dragon, and the dragon will grant a wish. Mm-hmm. Um, and along the way, he meets uh, Bulma, a girl. I guess she's a teenage girl at this point. Um, and then they meet the the pig character. Um, I'm and sorry, just just a, a quick: uh, is it Bulma or is it Bluma? Um, well, the, oh, because uh, Son Goku says, "Isn't that panties when they first yeah, eat?" And that would be bloomers. He he's bloomers, yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, the katakana is bu- buduma in Japanese, so I think it's a little bit a little bit different from what they call. They, bu- yeah, they, in they've transliterated yeah. it as bulma, not bluma. Yeah. Yeah, or I think in Japanese for that they say biruma. Like, well, they, that, that's what they call the women, girls' gym clothes in schools, biruma. But anyway, um, Sorry, yeah, you mean to mess you up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I noticed in the in the English 
volume, one thing that they add at the end of the first chapter is sort of a ex- brief explanation that this is based on the Monkey King story. And Japanese don't need to be told that. But yeah. Right. right. Um, I also noticed that there are several places exclusive to the English version where someone misunderstands that Dragon Balls might be testicles. <laughs> Yeah, and that that those are I, compared to the Japanese version, that's not there. Oh, really? They're just saying, "Oh, what's a Dragon Ball?" You know? <laughs> so, so oh, basically, the American editors, uh, I guess, American uh, sexed it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> weird. What a surprise! Weird. But then, um, in other places, they they tone down sexual aspects of it, which I'll get to. But right. Um, well, uh, the other thing about the plot is they collect the seven Dragon Balls very quickly. Yeah, I was uh, expecting. Oh, this is going to be what goes on for volume after volume, but no, because by the end of se- by the end of volume two, they yeah. have collected all seven of them. The wish happens in a strange way, and then they lose the balls again, mm-hmm. um, and then they have to start an adventure. Now, my the the story the story that that Molele told me the first time many years ago mm. was that they got to the end of Dragon Ball. And the editor said, no, 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 it has to keep going. So they made Dragon Ball Z. Um, that's the way I heard it. That's Because recently the way you've been telling it is that they had one Dragon Ball and then the editor was like, no, 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 it has to keep going. So they made it seven Dragon Balls. Yeah, actually, that's what I heard. I don't know if it was Dragon Ball Z or or if it was uh, uh, in the middle of, of the original okay. Dragon Ball. But reading so the, the, now, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say the I the first the way you told it to me the first time it went from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z because of the editor, um, and I I reported that as fact in a uh, Wizard magazine article <laughs> back when I was writing for Wizard, and um, <laughs> that's that's how Wizard articles are written. Let me tell you, you hear something on the street and you just like put it in, and there's they don't have it's not like the New Yorker; they don't have fact checkers or anything. <laughs> they just run that shit. And then five years later, you hear a different story. You're like, oh, uh-oh. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, in Japan, the series was always Dragon Ball. It was only Dragon Ball Z or Z yes. for the cartoon. But then in the English version, instead of Volume 17, they had Dragon Ball Z Volume 1. Mm, yeah. To, because that kind of lines up with where the Dragon Ball Z anime starts. Right. Hmm. Um, yeah, and the fights. Uh, actually, well, as long as we're talking about the how the plot is not all fighting in the early volumes, even the fights, the fights that do show up here are usually only three or four or five pages. Mm-hmm. The most they're over pretty quickly for the most part. Yeah, or later there are several chapters for one fight. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I heard also too with the with the cartoon because the cartoon was on every week. And I think the issues, the episodes in the manga were coming out once a month. They had to, if they didn't, they were, I heard a story that they were, they were neck and neck. So if a chapter came out of the manga and they had a fight in the show, they would have to stretch that out until the next chapter of the manga came out. So they'd have to stretch the fight over four episodes. Mm. Uh Again, I don't know how true that is, but uh, it would explain why some of those fights just drag forever in the uh, TV. D- did you read that in Wizard? <laughs> uh, I didn't. Re- I didn't read that in Wizard. I think somebody else told me that. But uh, if I'd had the chance, I would have reported it as fact in Wizard. Uh, unfortunately, that opportunity never arose. Is Wizard is Wizard still around? Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, but Anime Insider who. Well, I started with Wizard, and then I moved on to Anime Insider, where I did most of my work. But Anime Insider is gone. Wizard is still kind of coughing along. Um, they <laughs> they've cut a lot of staff and key personnel in the last couple of years, but they are um, they're no longer known as Wizard. The guide to comics are known as Wizard, the men's pop culture magazine, or something like that. What are they, Esquire for geeks? Uh, even worse, they're like they're like uh, FHM for geeks is what they are. Oh, really? I mean, just, yeah, what? like they have articles like where they just show you like um, they show you the, just the boobs of like video game characters, and you have to guess <laughs> which video game character it is. My um, God! Yeah, it, it, they used to they used to have like. Uh, 
I don't know. They used to be okay in the early, early days. Like issue one, two, and three, they were pretty good. And then 1992, when Image hit, I think things kind of started to go really sour. And uh, um, they've just kind of going downhill from there. Yeah, that's a long ride down. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I caught them. I caught them when they were still kind of vaguely semi-respectable. Uh, <laughs> the early 2000s, maybe. Hmm. A couple of years in there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. anyway. Um, yeah, Dragon Ball. So um, <laughs> before we get into the the uh, sort of sex humor aspects of it, I wanted to talk a little bit about Bulma because uh, it's interesting that in spite of the fact that she is eye candy fan service in a lot of scenes, she's also very intelligent. And she's, <laughs> she's created this uh, Dragon Ball radar by herself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've found that... Uh, uh, Akira Toriyama well, had said uh, that he thought it was uh, where, where is that quote in my notes um, yeah he thought it is not fun to draw weak females so he uh-huh. created women that he felt were not only beautiful and sexy but also strong uh-huh. this was quoted in Wikipedia from a Shonen Jump interview uh-huh. um, yeah uh, the, the, the naming of the character and the, the actions in the first half of um, the the I guess the first volume um, are a little bit gratuitous, though. Um, she keeps flashing her vagina to an old man. Um, <laughs> and I don't know. I, I think that's... Well, she only does that once, and she didn't know she was doing it. Yeah, she thought she had underwear on. She thought she had her panties on. Right, right. But still. Um... Uh, but, th- yes, I, I hear what you're saying from a reader's perspective, definitely. But from a, from a story perspective, she... Her character is so obsessed with finding the Dragon Balls. Did we even explain who she is? Like, well, not really. Um, okay, he, Goku. Goku is the hero. He's this little monkey, half monkey, half boy. Apparently, he's a boy with the tail, monkey tail. And um, this girl Bulma comes along, and she's searching for these supposed Dragon Balls that will grant a wish. So she ends up teaming up with him, or kind of manipulating him into mm-hmm. helping her find them and she's totally obsessed with finding the dragon ball so for her if flashing her panties at an old man means getting a dragon ball she totally would that that's kind of it's kind of written into her personality that she would do that mm-hmm. uh, that that kind of thing is not really uh she doesn't have any inhibitions about it if it means getting a dragon ball yeah yeah and she's also boy crazy which is you know even as intelligent as she is and most of the characters have two sides like a really a resourceful side, even Goku, you know, mm-hmm. and has a, a completely idiotic side, which yeah. gets them into trouble. Yeah, that's true. A lot, I, a lot of the characters have those, have or at least two dimensional. They have those sort of conflicting sides to them. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, then there, there's a scene where, at least in the uncensored version, uh, we see uh, Bulma in the shower and see mm-hmm. her boobs and so forth. Um, right, and the scenes you were talking about where she's flashing her underwear or thinks she is. Um, now, did you, when we were pre- preparing for this and we would, were talking about doing it for a long time, you were Kumar. You were talking about trying to get the uncensored version, but was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. See, this is this because we've been talking about doing this episode for months and months. half a year. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I was, I was initially, I was like, okay, I want to do Dragon Ball, but I don't want to do a censored version. So I went online, I started looking at, at all the different versions, and every version that Viz has put out has had a different set of edits mm. or sanitization. Mm. Um, and no, it seems like almost no two versions have the same amount. Um, and in the end, it turned out that the only, the most uncensored version English you can get is the individual issues. Which of course you can't get anymore. Um, you can only get a censored version of the uh, the trade paperback version. So um, with things are cut like well, we see Bulma's breasts in the shower in the original version. In the censored version, they've got like glass reflection over or, or soap bits. bubbles. Yeah, and when she flashes her vagina at the old man, you see her butt from behind in the original version. In the new version, her clothing is draped down uh, <laughs> over her behind and uh, I think we also mentioned um, 
we mentioned Goku having the towel over his uh, penis in the censor version. And um, one scene, which is hilarious, was um, Goku used to sleep on his grandfather's crotch mm. <laughs> at night. And uh, Bulma comes in, and it's their first night together, I think. Yeah. And um, she lies down. He says, can I sleep on top of you? She's like, no way, go away. She lies down, go to sleep. He's like, I'm going to do it anyway. And he lies down on top of her. He's like, why Why doesn't she have a pillow down there on her crotch? So he lifts up her skirt, and he's freaked out to see that she does not have a penis. And she, he, she pulls off her panties and it has a shocked expression on her face. Now, in the censor version, they've recut it in such a way that you don't see any of what Goku is doing. You only see his facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they've kind of they they cut out two or three panels to make it work, and it's kind of it's really pretty awful. Um, and to me, cutting out the and oh, another another big one is um, when they meet uh, Oolong for the first time, and they mm, think that's, he's that's a the, giant monster. That's the pig. And he's, he, yeah, right. He's looking. He appears as a big giant monster. Yeah. And um, he he's coming to take away. He takes away the girls of this village to do we don't know what with to back to his lair. And um, he sees they send a Bulma in place of somebody else's daughter as part of this trap. And he sees her, and um, he's like, whoa, what's your cup size? And she says, like, 34C or something like mm -hmm. that. And the next, next panel, you get a thought balloon, and in the thought balloon is, is a picture of him with her breasts between his head, like his head between her breasts, and him doing the, the quote-unquote puff puff, um, <laughs> which is like bouncing her boobs off of his ears or something like that. Um, that panel, that thought balloon is completely replaced in the censored version with a bit of dialogue that says 34C, she must be from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> and, any, and also the other thing is, oh, that maybe that was a, I can't remember if that was pop pop. The other thing is, um, once Goku learns for the first time that there are men, girls and boys, and girls do not have penises, every time he meets someone new, he pats them on the crotch to figure out if they're male or female. In the censored version, that's been cut completely. And it's uh. just, it's been replaced with staring. And they've actually redrawn his arm in some cases, so it's not touching the crotch. He's just staring. <laughs> and I think it's called Pat Pat or something like that. And uh -huh. Bulma's always like, no Pat Pat. Mm. And now she, censored version, she's like, no staring. Uh -uh. Um, and uh, the thing is, you know, the sexual humor is the central part of the humor and the personality of Dragon Ball. Yeah, especially um, in the early stories. Yeah, and to cut that out, it just, it kind of, um, it was sacrilegious to the spirit of the book, in in my opinion. Mm. I mean, the uncensored version is, is, is good, uh, but the current censored ones are, are pretty abominable, uh, that kind of censorship. Yeah, this one, seventh printing, as far as I could tell, the only visual uh, editing was the shower scene with mm -hmm. so soap bubbles over her, her boobs. But uh, Oh, you got soap bubbles, because I, I think the version I've got has, like, window glare. But the other things you were just talking about, those are all in here. Oh, are they? Um, on, the, on the other hand, I noticed that in some cases the, the translation change things a little bit like we're mm. in the japanese he says i used to sleep on my grandpa's crotch can i sleep on your crotch uh mm. in here in english he just says i used to use my grandpa as a pillow can i use you as a pillow it doesn't specify a body part mm. um or another place she says uh uh you c if you give me the four star dragon ball you can touch my butt but in here it just says you can uh, no, yeah, in here it's just you can look at it. You can see my book. Oh, well, Not see, the touch. version I've got, here's here's another issue. The, ver the, I, the original version was you can touch me on the butt. Yeah. The version I've got, which is the most sensitive version, is you can kiss me on the lips, but she's sticking out her butt to him, so it makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> um, and there's other bits like um, where he, one of the hilar most hilarious things in Dragon Ball is where is the scene where he says, why do you have a butt on your chest? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and she's like, don't you know anything which has been changed here to do you have you have something on top to help you balance or, you know, something <laughs> <laughs> so, so idiotic. Um, yeah. And yet at the same time, you know, Oolong's obsession with ladies panties remains intact. I don't think there's any way they could have cut it out. So mm. even in the censored edition, he's like, oh, I, I, you know, he's crazy about girls' panties. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of it, too, is, you know, um, you know, Bulma is boy obsessed. She wants the Dragon Ball so she can get a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy shows up. What's his name? Uh, Yam- Yamcha? Yamcha. Yamcha, who is totally terrified of women and wants to get the Dragon Ball so he can get over his fear of women. But they're all te- they're all kind of... 14, 15, 16 years old. So they're mm-hmm. almost, um, it's almost, uh, I don't know, kind of like a puppy love. Um, they're not, Bulma doesn't think of boys in sexual terms. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, that's part of the whole raciness of it is nobody really understands sexuality except for the old guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Ula wants, wants, women's panties but it's not really clear why he's just obsessed with them for no (laughs) no real apparent reason um i think it might be racy even for japanese kids but the raciness is part of the fun of it um Mm. you know like reading that and not your parents not knowing about it but it not really being that bad um Mm. i just find it's it's more offensive that they cut it out than you know than if they left it in but you know, Dragon Ball is one of those books that every once in a while gets into trouble in American libraries because some kid gets it out and then their mother finds them with it and, you know, yeah, raises yeah. it. About it. But. So, um, kind of, I've got a bit of a stupid question here. Um, what is the appeal of Dragon Ball? Uh, 174 printings, and um, I, I can understand <laughs> it's, it's drawn quite well. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is is cute, but silly. Mm. <laughs> why but, why why do people go through such lengths to to sanitize it for American consumption and all of this? Well, I think that the sanitization thing part of part of that is not in, well. It's Viz's fault, but the TV show came out and the mass audience for the TV show meant those people were going to look at the comics. Um, And that required sanitization. I think if the comic had remained, if it was only being bought by 10,000 people going to comic shops, it would have, it would have been fine. That's why the floppies are so uncensored. Mm. Um, Once you get these paperbacks that are supposed to go in bookshops and things and millions of people are buying it, then you start to run into major issues with people raising a stink about it, and so Viz was, I guess, their hand was kind of forced where they had to censor this thing for mass American consumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, I think... Like said, I guess uh, that doesn't answer the question of the appeal of Dragon Ball. Is that what you were asking? Um, actually, that is uh, more, more to the point, yeah. Why is it so popular? What what is the what is the appeal here? Hmm. Well, having read sixteen volumes, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, like I said, the kind of story it is does change. But I think, um, hmm, I wasn't really prepared. I think for this it's question, I think but. it's a great. I think the mix of characters is really great. And uh-huh. yeah, I, I think that to, yeah. Go ahead. I think the uh, the humor in it is really um, organic and cute, and um, I think cuteness is a big selling point. And I think it's I think it's genuinely funny. Um, I feel like the story change. I feel like with making Goku an alien in volume sixteen or seventeen or whenever it's revealed, um, maybe violated the character. Uh, in the way that Highlander 2 violated Highlander 1 by making them space aliens. Um, I kind of, you know, I don't know about that. In a sense, I think maybe Dr. Slump is a little bit better because it was more consistent the whole way through. Mm. Um, but I, I think the, I don't think anybody was really doing, I mean, the humor is well staged and well executed as well. I don't really know that what other Japanese comics were doing this well in 1984. 
Mm. Yeah, I was impressed, even just looking at Volume 1, how the characters interact and the the, the plot mm. is kind of complex. And mm. you, you've got the one point where you have two shape-shifting characters who are trying to trick each other at the same time, not realizing that they're being tricked themselves. Right. <laughs> mm. Um, and you know, just, just how different things happen in such a way in a certain order that the, when they fit together, it really works out in an interesting way. And I think, uh, I think also Toriyama knows, knows what kids think is funny. Um, mm. and I think he knows how to appeal to kids and that's, that was a huge part of the initial appeal. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, elementary school kids, you know, I have an eight-year-old. Anything having to do with, you know, like underwear or butt, this is hilarious, you know. Right, Or right. toilet or, right. yeah. Well, um, you know, my question isn't to knock Dragon Ball. I, I don't think that it's it's not funny or, or that it's not worth it. I'm just kind of, it, it hits me kind of weird. Uh, okay. You mean, because, is your question maybe why is it bigger than other stuff that's as good? Um, well, I, I, I don't necessarily know that there is anything as good in the same kind of genre. Like you said, uh, is there anything else like this out there? Maybe not. But um, just it seems that it's... it's um, I, I heard another story about uh, Dragon Ball, <laughs> which uh, you may report as fact uh, wherever you like. But um, apparently... Uh, it is the, the job of the newly recruited editors at Shueisha to go to Toriyama Akira's house and beg him to come back. <laughs> with, with a wave of his hand, he sends them packing every year. <laughs> that, that is the initiation into the editor circle at, at Shueisha. But wow. uh, uh, it, 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 it garners that much power. Uh, mm. and, and I'm... I'm it's a little bit more than uh, a comic at that point. Mm. It's, it's a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. mm. And I just mm. wanted to... I, I'm not sure what exactly it was that pushed it so far. And everybody you talk to, uh, they've, they've heard of Akira. Mm. They've read Dragon Ball. Yeah. Um, that just for the general population of Japan, everybody I talk to, it doesn't matter what the age is. Mm. Sure. Um, but of course, if you say Crusher Joe, no one has any idea what the fuck you're talking about, <laughs> let alone Dirty Pair. Um, I don't know. It might have just been the right place at the right time, you know. And and the other thing is, it's it's really, uh, it's really commercial uh, in the sense that it's not. It's it's just it is an entertainment. It's not really, you know. There's no deeper message behind it. Uh, at the same time, he was already a star because of Dr. Slump, and here he kind of further refined his skills, so um, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't explain the original huge, you know, the explosion of it in the first place. Who knows what what set it over the top. Mm. Um, reading on through it, um, as this kind of, the type of story changes and it becomes more about fighting and and sometimes people actually die and it becomes somewhat more serious um it was interesting to me to compare um uh, well you know dragon ball influenced a lot of other comics that came after it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, naruto and one piece and mm -hmm. i've i've read some of both of those and I think Toriyama's ability to choreograph and draw a fight and so that you easily know what's happening is far better mm. than, than those others, especially better than One Piece in the early volumes. Now, mm. I, I never once said, what happened in this panel? You know, mm. It was always crystal clear to me, and he's choreographed these things in such an interesting way. I think yeah. that's, that's part of the appeal of it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, I also noticed you said you were somebody. I guess Kumar was saying that it doesn't really. It's basically just an entertainment. I did notice sort of a recurring theme, though, of um, enemies becoming friends. Yes, that's true. Actually, that happens <laughs> with Oolong in Volume One. It happens yeah. with someone else in Volume Two. It happens again later on. Um, yeah. It, and I, I understand it happens again in, in Dragon Ball Z that I haven't read yet. Um, mm. 
but uh, that, that was interesting because you know you usually don't see that in American comics. And if, if someone does become a good guy later, it turns out they become bad again. <laughs> like like Sandman and Spider Man at Marvel was a good guy for a while, and then they changed him back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, go ahead. Uh yeah, I don't I wonder if it had something to do with the early way the fights were were set up that in sometimes neither of them could win and sometimes the only resolution was to make peace with people. Uh I don't know if I'd want to read too much into it, but it definitely is a common theme that Mhm tend to resolve their differences without fighting nearly volumes at least anyway and or after fighting you know? mm-hmm. and as far as the, kind of the change in tone I started to feel like once he kind of started going down a certain path it was inevitable because he keeps giving Goku more and more power and mm-hmm. uh, then he has to have more and more powerful uh, people to fight right. And so the right. fights keep getting to be larger and larger scale right. and more life and death type of situation. Right. Um, so, Actually, go ahead. Uh, I was about to say I, that actually brought another thing to mind for me. It's even in the early volumes. You know, I've only read two or three. Uh, Goku is super powerful, mm-hmm. uh, but it seemed in, in practically invulnerable and. Um, it was interesting to me reading it because you often hear about Superman writers struggling to deal with the character because he's too powerful. And I'm like, you should read Dragon Ball because <laughs> he, he really doesn't, his power level doesn't seem to matter. Um, if, you know, his, doesn't know his weak, he has weaknesses which are not kryptonite, but um, he doesn't need to be depowered or, you know, whatever so that they can tell a story. It really um, is quite clever without it. Hmm. But you're saying he gets more powerful. Yeah, I mean he yeah. he keeps you know training or gets something else that that ramps up his power and you know pretty soon he's passed up pretty much everybody else and they're going oh how much more powerful can he get and you know it keeps <laughs> happening oh. and then you know th- they think he's never going to get more powerful than this and the next time they they see him he's twice as strong you know um, even though even though he goes so so. Uh... He gets so powerful. Uh, I think the comparison to Superman is 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 valid only if you look at Dragon Ball as an ongoing series um, that that is never going to end. Uh, I think at, at Toriyama Akira knew what he was going for, even if he, it shifted from time to time, uh, and he also knew that eventually there would be an end to it, uh, so he could focus towards that end, but. Uh, with Superman writers, they don't know necessarily where they're starting or where they're ending. And they have to write in this kind of vague middle ground. Mm. Um, and, you know, that, that comic is, is decided by committee, so... Right. I mean, it's going to be right. a, a, a bitch to write anyway, but on top of that, you've sure. got that. It's just... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I've, I've just hit the shower scene and... Uh, yeah. Save that one for the spank bank. <laughs> uh, but more more than the shower scene is the um, uh, uh, what's his name, Lord Yamcha. Um, yeah, yeah. His his reaction, uh, his facial reaction. He not just his face, but he reacts with his entire body. And there's something really um, uh, just well visualized in that. Mm. You don't see that a lot in, in comics these days. And actually, I think it's something yeah. that um, sometime in the 90s, um, Japanese comics got a little bit um, uh, flat. Mm. Yeah, uniform. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just, just a little bit stale in, in its movement and its, and its, its uh, characterizing of, of, yeah. of uh, yeah. emotion. Yeah. No, his visual language is excellent, and he and his yeah. shortcuts are excellent too. Yeah. Uh, you know, in drawing, in just simplifying faces or expressions or body language, it's, he, he he was really accomplished even at this early stage. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing um, I noticed comparing 
the the Japanese and the English ones. The the, Jap- the English one is twice the price, but the printing is worse. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at the the Japanese version, the well printed one, you you can really appreciate the art more, and especially the grays, the shading to it. Yeah. Um, well, once you get to 174 printings, you know you can afford large print runs and nice paper. And yeah, it is nicer paper too. <laughs> yeah. And yet, it's only 400 yen compared to about twice that for the. <laughs> yes. The well, mo- I will say that um, the English edition I've got, um, it's the printing is not bad compared to the way, the way Viz used to print single issues, um, especially in the mid late 80s, were really blotchy and blurred and horrible. Mm. Uh, so you know, even the English edition you've got is a, is a better better than what it would have been. You know, printed in single issues at uh, least. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything else to say about Dragon Ball? No, it's kind of it for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> want to give it a rating? Ah. Uh, what are we rating out of? Uh, one to ten. Um. Wow. Uh, nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of of reading it, so I can't I can't give it a full uh, uh, rating. The story isn't quite developed yet for me, but uh, from what I've seen so far, um, it's an eight. Okay. Yeah, especially for for the um, the fact that it's clear, fun. Uh, and not, um, uh, not it doesn't self censor, mm-hmm. uh, which makes it actually that much more interesting. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening to this special flashback episode in memory of Akira Toriyama. Follow the link in the show notes to hear our earlier review of Toriyama's Doctor Slump, and don't miss our review of Ant Man and the Wasp coming this Wednesday. See you then.